And now uh, we have a ministry that I'm phenomenally proud of, uh, one that's done tremendous work in the lives of fellow parishioners and people outside these doors, our Stephen Ministry Program. And you should know uh, that each one of our Stephen ministers has been through uh, months and months of, uh, of training uh, to be a listener, to be a prayer, to be a, a sojourner uh, in the journey of life, wherever life uh, takes people, uh, and they want to be put to work. Uh, so I first would like all of our current Stephen ministers, uh, current or past Stephen ministers, to please stand up. And I'd like to say there were five at 8 o'clock. And there were five at 8 o'clock, and, and, and there's more amongst us still. So. These folks didn't go through all that training to sit idle. So if you're ever wondering whether uh, your uh, issue uh, is big enough uh, or if your friends or someone you love, uh, uh, the issue that they need to somebody to listen to is substantial enough uh, to merit a Stephen minister, the answer is yes. Uh, whether it's just a transition in life, uh, an empty nest, and just trying to figure out how do I get over that hump, whatever it is, uh, they went through this so that they can walk with you. So please, uh, uh, there's usually literature right in front of you in the pew. Um, uh, please take that with you and, and, and use it when you need it or hand it off to someone when you need it. Uh, and to talk about the uh, effect that uh, this ministry has, uh, uh, has offered outside of these church walls, uh, Jill is going to come up and talk about uh, her experience of having a Stephen minister. And we're very blessed to have you here. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Jill Morris, and I am honored to be here today to tell you a little bit about myself and my amazing experience with the Stephen Ministry. I want to make sure that everyone understands that I am here of my own free will and that I voluntarily want to share my story with you. The Stephen Ministry takes confidentiality very seriously, so when I heard St. James was looking for someone to share their testimony, it was an opportunity I couldn't refuse, and I jumped at the chance to be able to speak today. My mom always used to tell me when I was little, I'm always in your back pocket. She would kiss her hand, curl it up, and hand me the imaginary kiss. She would do this in times when I would have a test in school, friendship struggles, or any other time in my life when I was going through a rough patch. As I have grown into adulthood, I am so lucky that my mom and I have become as close in our relationship as we are today. I know I can tell her just about anything and can always depend on her. However, three years ago, I found myself in one of the most difficult periods of my life. I had been married for seven years and was struggling to keep my marriage intact. Divorce was never in my vocabulary until then. Years before, my husband had served two tours in Iraq and like many, many veterans, came back very different from the man that I had married. He was struggling with issues like PTSD and traumatic brain injury, just to name a few. We sought help through counseling, but our marriage seemed to continuously settle into the toxic pattern it had been in since he came back from his second tour. I also unexpectedly found myself the mother of a child with special needs. My son was born with a syndrome that is virtually impossible to, to detect in utero, and it is so rare that to this day, only 90 children have ever been diagnosed with it. Many children who are born with the syndrome do not live past their second year of life. Unfortunately, it also affects the body from head to toe. He has a G-tube to help him maintain his weight. He is non-ambulatory, non-verbal, and has significant visual and cognitive deficits. There is no prognosis for these children, so the future is full of uncertainty. I stayed at home with him the first two years. I took him to dozens of doctor's appointments, therapies, and specialists. I spent every ounce of energy I had on making sure he had what he needed. Of course, this put an increased strain on my marriage. While I had accepted that my son was special, my husband was having a hard time coming to the realization and understanding that our sweet boy needed much, much more attention and care than your average child. Dealing with his own issues and trying to take care of our son always seemed to be too much for my spouse. I remember feeling the pull to continue to have faith, continue to pray, and to find a church where I could worship. I begged my husband to go with me to church, but when Sunday came, he always had an excuse why he couldn't go. 
I found myself very alone and often arguing about the same things over and over again with him. I found myself not being able to tell my friends about my struggles and the isolation I felt because all of their children were normal and their marriages, while not perfect, were in a much better shape than my own. I couldn't tell my mom a lot of things because there are just some things that belong between a husband and a wife. I didn't want to burden anyone I loved with the stresses I was dealing with in my reality. After a lot of soul searching, prayer, and of course dozens of times of crying myself to sleep, I finally couldn't take it anymore and I knew something had to change. I knew I could be a better mother and maybe find my way back to who I was if I removed myself from my marriage. I decided to move out and begin the separation phase of a divorce. I found myself living in a small apartment with my younger sister and I was sharing a bedroom with my son. I had no job and very little savings. The day I moved out, my spouse had told me that he hoped I would fail. I know this was said out of anger and sadness, but I knew in my heart I was making the right choice for my son and for myself. Over the course of a few months after I had moved out, I was approached several times by Sue Grushevsky, who is my son's godmother and a member of this church. She told me about the Stephen ministry and how if I ever needed someone to just talk to, to let her know. I turned her down several times and I told her, nope, I have this, I'm fine. I was determined to handle everything on my own, especially since it seemed like I had not just my spouse, but a lot of other people who wanted me to fail. I refused to be that woman, the one who wouldn't get out of bed or who would cry into a tub of ice cream at night. I had to be strong, and that meant not divulging my private life to a therapist or counselor, since I had just been through marital counseling for almost three years. So to me, I was skeptical of the traditional model of therapy, since in my mind, it hadn't been a success in the past. Sue was always very understanding and let me know that if I needed someone, all I needed to do was to call her. At the same time, I started attending Warrenton Bible Fellowship and had made several friends there. I finally felt like I had a place to worship where I belonged. After lots of prayer and other family members recommending that maybe I just go talk to someone not because they thought I was a basket case, but because they knew me better than I knew myself and knew it would be beneficial for me. It was also nice to know that it was a completely free service to me since I was now a single mom on a budget. I also knew through conversations with Sue that it was spiritually based and thought, maybe this would be a good thing. Maybe the Lord is trying to steer me down this path. I really didn't have anything to lose. So I picked up the phone and I called Sue. She said she had someone in mind that would be perfect to minister for me. Several days later, I had my first conversation over the phone with my minister, Joanna Edrington. After just a few minutes of conversation, I immediately made the connection that I had atten attended high school with her daughter years before. She immediately let me know that if I did not feel comfortable talking to her because of my association with her, with her daughter, that that was okay, and she always wanted me to feel comfortable with her no matter what I had to say. I knew the Lord had put Joanna in my path, and I knew I wanted her to be my minister. I learned early on with my relationship with the Lord that He never makes mistakes, especially with the people He places in my life. After our conversation, we agreed to meet once a week for an hour to see how we got along and to see if we were a good match. We would either meet at church or at a local restaurant. During our sessions, it quickly became clear to me that this wasn't a typical counseling or therapy program. We started our sessions with prayer and also ended with prayer. She would ask me at the end of our sessions, what can I pray for you this week? That really helped me knowing that there was always someone in my corner wanting me to succeed. If in our conversations we felt compelled to pray, we did. Oftentimes it was right in the middle of Panera. Joanna never judged me or gave me unsolicited advice. She truly was someone who I could say anything to. She was someone completely outside my situation who could give me insight into what I was going through and ask me very thought-provoking thought questions that I reflected on, not just in our sessions, but throughout the week. Sometimes our sessions would be back and forth conversations or just me talking the entire time. The connection Joanna and I built and still have is deeper than just someone you have a friendship with, a counselor, or even a teacher. I like to think of her as my spiritual mentor. 
In every session, there was always an understanding and foundation that this was a time of healing and growing in my faith and my relationship with the Lord. This was what I had been lacking in my marriage and in my spiritual journey. I needed someone in my life to help me be closer to God and to guide me to look to the Lord during the challenges I was facing. Furthermore, Joanna helped me find clarity during a time that I thought I had everything figured out and that the Lord is always working in my life and not just when things become difficult. The Lord truly worked through her and eventually into me. She helped me trust myself and trust in the Lord on a deeper level than I could have ever imagined. It's been almost two years since my divorce and I am happy to say that things are going really well. I have a career that I love and I get to help families and children with developmental disabilities. My son is in kindergarten, he's thriving, and he's gonna be a race car driver for Halloween. Even more, I am closer to the Lord than I have ever been. I finally feel like myself again, but even more because I know I am following the Lord's path and fulfilling my purpose. I'm even in a healthy relationship with someone who not only loves my son and I, but also shares the same beliefs I have and who shares the same love of the Lord as I do. I feel like the Stephen ministry was and still is a vital part of my relationship with the Lord. I am a better mother, daughter, friend, and person than I was before. I still meet with Joanna every now and then. She always tells me that she is just a phone call away. I encourage anyone here, or if you know of someone going through something difficult in their life, or even if you think that you or that person are just doing okay, to reach out and know that this resource is available to you or even those who do not attend this church like myself. Knowing you have the Lord and someone cheering you on is more powerful and life-changing than you can ever imagine. I know I will always have my mom in my back pocket, but I am so blessed to know that now I have Joanna, my Stephen minister, in my back pocket too. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jill. And thank you to all the people uh, who uh, offered their gifts for Stephen Ministry. And I do hope that you take that uh, 